Bon. How did you hear about that? Uh, 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 so I give away a lot for children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because I was going to call her. I was going to call her. She was going to live in the Can you open it up to uh, uh, next, next door? door? Yeah. Next door there. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, called uh, uh, yeah, there is just Websites next door. That was just next that. door, and then you, you guide you know, on how to go and, then, uh, and log in and, and then put an email address, and then you have access to it. So that was that was done because of COVID, so that there could be some type of communication in the middle of the neighborhood. But no, we we always have good stuff in six. I agree. Yeah, we're right. 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 issues and concerns. Well, I can hear it uh, citywide. Oh, when you've been doing that, that day that I came to see lights. I brought oh, a picture with me. Oh, okay. But yeah, we well, have some time. Hey, what's going on? Strangers, I'm taking a visa. Oh, yeah, he is. He's a good one. And all that is just all the time. Oh, yeah. Good. 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 Tell them, in other words, gang relations and stuff, and I said, well, according to what they told me, they're gangs and gangs. They're all gangs, but you know, depending on the spray paint, there's a lot of curse for that particular entity, gang that are in that area. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have another gang from another area that will exit out and put their moniker in there. Yeah. 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 
Give it up space. allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one 
Officer Hector Morales, I have Officer Jeremiah Casillas, and Officer John Lara. We're hoping to have one, maybe two more, to address a lot of the issues and concerns in the valley because the valley is a pretty extensive and big area. Starts off at Delta and ends over there on Loop 375, about a mile or two down, and goes south of all the uh, River and south of I-10, so it's it's a pretty extensive area. Again, thank you for for coming. As police area representatives, some of the issues that me and my constituents, Officer Casillas and Officer Lara, address first and foremost are presentations like this one here today. Presentations at the schools, at the businesses. For example, the schools have presentations that deal with career day. Career day is right around the corner. We uh, go to some of the elementary schools and talk to some of the young adults and stress education, that they venture out and start looking not only what high school they're gonna go to, but start thinking about college, stressing how important education is. We address Amber cards we have police cadets. Officer Lara and Officer Casillas will be starting that program again. I think at this point in time, we have a total number of seven. At this point in time, we hope to get a couple more. And with those police cadets, a lot of them are young adults that are interested in law enforcement. And we teach them some of the very basics that hopefully, as they pursue their education in school and college, they get into uh, to their degrees and then join, we're hopeful, the police department or law enforcement in general. We also have health fairs. We've addressed a couple here at Bassett Center where we've had health fairs and we participate with a lot of the other law enforcement agencies. Children, families go by and we give them packets and um, sheriff is there, constables. It's a really nice, we really have had some nice turnouts. Most of them are scheduled at Bassett Center. We have National Night Out. A lot of you are very well aware of National Night Out. We're hoping to bring that back and focus on that. Of course, we also want to address Neighborhood Watch Association meetings. Um, at this point, to our knowledge, we have uh, 14 block captains that are still have mentioned to us that they are block captains, we hope to get more because with each block captain comes that neighborhood that they're, that they're in charge of and exchanging information and just doing the neighborhood watch and we address that, we go, we assist, we give them guidelines and, and hopefully even we're able to put up signs and everything, but we ad will address that as well. We have park watch meetings. A lot of the parks, we just got an email where some of our parks have, are being vandalized. They're citywide, but of course, what we're gonna focus on the ones that are here in, in the valley. So we're addressing that. We address it primarily during the day. We'll drive by, make sure that they're safe and there's nothing bad happening, but we'll send messages to our patrol, our evening patrol that are out there that can check on the parks. And even during graveyard hours, a lot of people that tend to try to be there after hours and, and police will patrol them and tell them, you know, what are you doing here? It's after hours. Some people just don't know it. Sometimes they don't read the signs and they just need to be educated. And of course, CAB meetings, which is what you all are here for and what we're addressing and talking to you with, with our meeting. We have city reps meetings. I just was involved in a virtual meeting that involved Mr. Henry Rivera. We brought up some issues, some concerns from the people there in Sunnyfield, and we addressed them. We addressed those still on a virtual matter because a lot of the people that are from Sunnyfields just feel more comfortable where it's virtual. 
and we and I addressed that a couple of days ago, and that was with Mr. Henry uh, Rivera. And then we go into what we call safety awareness. We get calls from businesses. We can address uh, active shooter. We've gone in there. We can go into a business and tell them, okay, just let's pretend somebody comes in with a gun and a rifle and they start shooting. What is your plan? How are you gonna, what are you gonna do? And a lot of people just freeze. Like, uh, well, then let's practice. Let's make a plan. Let's have a plan. Businesses get broken into. We call them burglary of businesses. And a lot of the times, it's because lack of security measures. For example, they don't have cameras. They don't have uh, a jewelry store that doesn't put away all of their jewelry in a safety box. Sometimes things are visible, so break a window, break, take. So those are some of the things that we can notice, observe, address, and hopefully correct for future reference of that. They don't get burglarized. The same thing happens with a residential area and a home. Sometimes we lock our doors and we check it and we figure, okay, everything's fine. You leave to work during the course of the day. For those of us that aren't retired, that we have to go out to work. So when my, my house is, is locked, it's okay. But then you don't realize they still found a way to break in. We tend to go to home, those homes upon request and stress to them like, you know, you just have a regular lock, you check the hole. Uh, other security measures, security uh, companies that, without mentioning any names, that can provide security to your home and alarm once it goes off. A lot of people don't know, but once you get an alarm, there's there's a fee that's paid to the city so that the police department can go and check on their alarm. So we, we explain that to homeowners as well. Crime prevention presentations. One of the other issues that we were also addressing and because we had our traffic unit, but right now we have all our traffic units at headquarters. But when we had the traffic here, we would address traffic concerns, stop sign violations, especially in a residential area where you notice that there's just a lot of speeders and everything. But the, the advantage that we still have is the issues and concerns that come up with that, we still address it with headquarters. We tell them the concerns and they help us provide traffic control, our motorcycle officers, and address those issues. So that's a big plus. We address crosswalks, cross guards, pedestrian safety. One of the things here that I was noticing, we have car seat safety. A lot of people are like, car seat. Oh my goodness, we went through training for about a week. Officer Lara and Officer Casillas and myself. And it was a very strenuous, hard class because it's not about you look at a car seat and you think, well, just put it in the car and put a seatbelt through it and the child is safe. And when you look at all the technicalities and all the accidents that take place, as a matter of fact, I think a day or two ago, just in the news, we heard where a van or two ve three vehicles were involved and some young adults, children, were ejected. Why do you think they were ejected? Because obviously they didn't have their seatbelts on. And one of the things that, that we learned a lot with car seats is especially when you have your, your, your child, your newborn. Between newborn and two years old, a lot of people don't realize that you're supposed to face the car seat backwards, opposite. And then people will argue with us to say, well, I want to keep an eye on my baby. We can just suggest and tell them the best way to keep their child safe, but then the rest is really up to you, up to the person. But it's amazing how we are taught how we're supposed to really bracket those seats in. All the gizmos, all the special harnesses that, that 
come with a, with a car seat and that play in to the car seat itself where there's anchors in there and you see designs on a car seat and you think that's fancy stitching or it's got this fancy little thing. No, it serves a purpose. Little dots, you reach in and you find out there's an anchor and you realize, wow, that's where you put the seat, that's where you extend the thing on it, and you anchor them in, and you, and you just you realize how nice and snug and safe a child can actually be. So we were tested, and then there's different types of car seats because it's all in phases. You have for zero to two years, and then depending on the weight, uh, for two years, young adults to booster chairs and everything. So it's very interesting. So if somebody comes in and I just had the privilege of addressing a grandmother who came in with a car seat for her two-year-old uh, grandson. And I went out there and I explained things and everything that I had her do it. And she, she left with such peace of mind because that car seat was just snug. And all three were trained in that, which is important because my, my constituents, my, my my partners were dealing with a program with, uh, with the cadets, but I was here at the station, so that's why we all went through training because there's gotta be one of us here so that we can take care of a walk-in and address it, especially when they take the time to come in and need assistance. If we're, and if we're out, out on the field, they'll call us and we're not that far away. One of us will come by and address that. So that car seat concern is, was very important. I'm really glad that we actually went we got certified, took a week, but we were very, very proud of that. One of the other things that we do is we deal side by side with code compliance. Code compliance can be where you're at home and you haven't paid attention to your yard and all of a sudden your weeds are two, three feet high and you think, like kind of like the Mexican diet, oh my God, <laughs> Or I'm gonna wait for some rain because it gets really soft and dirty. <laughs> and before you know it, and you see a uniform, like, is it the police? Some people think they're the police because even their vehicles are, their their trucks they, they look like our police trucks, and they have their uniform and they're they're code compliance officers, so they are officers. And they come and they'll explain to them, and they, 100% of the time, give the people the opportunity to make it right to clean up the weeds. We give them a time frame and everything. And while they're doing that, and they look out on the street, they see an abandoned vehicle. And you can tell it's abandoned because the registration is 2015. <laughs> there's weeds on the bottom. There's, you know, two kittens down there. It's a home for them now. And it's like, hmm, that vehicle hasn't been moved. So they'll send us an email. There are some code compliance officers that uh, We'll take pictures and send them to them, which helps us address that when we go out there. We know exactly what we're looking for. And then those particular vehicles will do a five-day tag. Because that in itself is an eyesore. Like the resident is an eyesore for a nice neighborhood for people that take care of the lawns and the person that doesn't, it's a nice sort to have a bad new vehicle down the street. And it works both ways because when we go out there and we look at an abandoned vehicle and just outright like you know, we're going to a follow up in a particular call. And we see that expired registration 2015, 1970 something truck with flat tires. <laughs> and we notice that the resident where it's at has junk vehicles and everything. So we'll contact code compliance. We'll get a, a, a reference number or a case number. And we, I personally and my partners will always give them the phone number so they can follow up and give us an update. So we address both, the, the private with code compliance and what's in the public roadway, which is city property. And that's something that we do side by side. We're just getting ready to have a meeting with code compliance, a lot of our officers come by and we talk, we bring up issues, concerns, because again, it's a team effort and we work side by side and we get, we, we've gotten to know them, they, they've gotten to know us and when we're out there, we're contacting each other, whether by text or even by cell. I have no problems or issues giving them my cell number. They'll just literally call me, say, where are you at? Oh, can you come here? I'm on my way. And that's how we work, side by side. And that's with code compliance. 
And of course, one of the things that we're stressing and hoping to get is neighborhood watch. That's really important because that keeps our neighborhoods safe. You know, the people that we have here obviously are concerned about your areas, the valley. And even though there's few of you right now, we're hoping that it builds up and that there's more. But because you're here, we're here because it's important to us. You all are our eyes and ears out there. Uh, a lot of the crime that's dealt with is because you all give us a heads up, things that you see. So that's kind of like in a nutshell, a lot of the things that we deal with and everything. I'm gonna turn it over to Officer Casilla so he can share some, some words with you as well. And then Officer Lai. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to thank everybody for being here. Uh, I'm Officer Casillas. i am uh, been here a couple of months. I'm new to the region. I uh, actually transferred from Pebble Hills Regional Command. Uh, came down to Community Services, and I'm getting to know the area and the people and the demographics that are involved uh, you know, with the area. Uh, it's been a very uh, pleasant experience and a learning one. Okay, uh, Community Services uh, entails a lot of work. Uh, you know, it's a step-by-step -step process, but eventually we look at things that are underlying in the community. Basically things that um, will eventually lead to larger problems in the near future. So we basically try to get at the root of it, you know, before it gets really out of hand. And what a lot of people don't understand, because that was one of the things in the neighborhood, uh, I've been approached by a lot of the neighbors, uh, you know, and they'll be like, uh, well, why did you give me a parking ticket? You know, because they're parked on their sidewalk or they're parked on the wrong side of the road, you know? And there's a, it's not just the enforcement. I mean, yes, it is against the law, you know, but there's a purpose behind it that serves a larger purpose. You know, and that's something that a lot of people don't understand. Like my partner was discussing junk vehicles, abandoned vehicles, um, you know, uh, graffiti. Uh, the furniture, I'm sure you've seen this, and furniture on sidewalks that nobody wants and trying to get rid of, all that contributes to the deterioration of neighborhoods, unkept yards, unkept properties. Um, so that's something that we are trying to address right now is to establish that regularity in each neighborhood, okay? So that we can have compliance. And in, this, in the process, it also changes the communal attitude of people to say, hey, you know what? The neighbors in this neighborhood actually care about their neighborhood, you know? And hopefully it'll instill something to say, hey, so should we, okay? Um, but that's, uh, that's one of the things that we do, okay, that's our main purpose, of course, is to do that and in the process also gain the inclusiveness of the community we want to establish rapport. To know that we are also there for the people and that the people can come to us, okay? And from there we strategize and formulate our approaches on how we're going to address the issues that you, know, you bring to our, excuse me, to our attention, okay? Um, John? Well, you guys took everything. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and, uh, and forward to John Locke. Yes, John, the floor I'm also glad that uh, while being in charge of Explorer, well, not Explorer, but anymore, we used to be Explorers, but we're public safety presents now. Uh, so I'll be working with the younger adults, uh, trying to build that uh, group as well as, as part of the community. So starting when I'm young, that's the best way to start. Program. I was a part of it, and I can tell you guys I was out here uh, cleaning my mosquitoes. Uh, <laughs> all the I know we're going to be uh, working now with, um, we used to call it Pride Day cleanups, so we're going to probably start working on that too. So we will, uh, I know my kids will be out there helping out as well. Okay. Call my kids because they're right there. These are my kids. But if you have anybody younger than uh, ages 14 or 20, more than welcome to be one of the ones uh, the ones uh, that help out. And they took everything. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> so, but thank you for coming out here. Now, let's, let's start making it bigger so we can help get more things out. What school do you go to coach? Uh, any high school. Uh,
which is right here in the valley. We, even middle school, as long as they're eight, I mean, uh, 14, they're, they're, they're eligible to join. So we target here in the valley, it's, it's Riverside, Del Valle, Bel Air, Isleta, I think that's it. Do you have any in the schools right now? I have, we have about seven. I know, I got a phone call from East Lake. I have a couple kids that they're gonna come over here. So even out of our city uh, limits are coming out here. So um, you can see our, our trophies out there. We like to go to see them. I like to take them out here too. So he was one of uh, uh, our students. He was one of the explorers, the original. So now it's my turn to teach. And now he's you know? taking you as one so. of my didn't think that I was a, Is it an after school thing or it, or a vocational life? No, it's an after school thing. Um, our priority is school first, then we have time to come out. Mm -hmm. And then we have to check to we check grades. So it's like any sports, if you don't pass, you can't play. So here we say, I mean, they can still come in, but they're going to be doing homework. That's all you want to know. If you're not passing, we'll make sure. So that's another positive way. No. The chairman. Yes. My name is Ana Arguelles, and I'm the president of the El Capitol Valley Neighborhood Association. We've been in existence for maybe almost more than 15 years. Uh, we have done a lot for our community, and uh, one of the things is right now we're having problems in our community, just like the office kids, the poor officers uh, said right now. Uh, one of our issues is that we are also having kids uh, having BB guns. They're shooting at the trees, they're shooting at the wicked gates, and they, they're proceeding. Uh, they're doing a lot of things and maybe racing uh, in the community and even shooting, like it's the muffler. It's, it's a lot of people, they, they come out and you think, oh, they're shooting at us, but it's not, it's the muffler. But then again, you never know if it's real or if it's not, but you need to report on that. And that's what we have done, me and my vice president, uh, Norma Villalobos, uh, we have done, we have had it brought to our attention by a lot of people in our community. We have had a meeting at Valle Bajo Neighborhood Association uh, Community Center, Recreation Center, and apparently we want, I'm here because I want to say thank you to Par Officer Casillas, uh, uh, Par Officer Morales, Lara, Lara? Lara and Morales. And Morales, and, and especially to uh, Lieutenant Hernandez. They have been there for us. Uh, we have gone through so much. A lot of our people are so afraid. We've got a lot of elderly in our community and they're even afraid of this youngsters that are coming up. Uh, we have one family that is terrible, but uh, I don't want to go into too, too much because I don't want to give them any for anything. But they actually moved care. out, didn't they? I'm sorry? One of those families moved out? From your neighborhood? What, actually, it, it was a brother. They moved out. The other one is still in the community. They went from one street to the other. But we were looking, and I was just showing the officers right now, they're graffitiing the house. After the, 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 they let them stay there and everything, they're still, they're doing a lot. They even took some, some uh, gates. Uh, that's why be careful out there. Look into your community and make sure that that before anything worse like this happens, we've even caught some trespassing. There's a house right next to mine, and uh, I saw there were I thought there were two, uh, but I saw them with my own eyes, and it was dark, but it wasn't. It was four of them. So you need to be careful, especially at night. Uh, I've also got a video on my phone. I have to stand behind. I've got pillars on my rock. And I have to stand behind uh, um, uh, one of my pillars to take a picture. They, out of the car, they were going like this into a tree. 
and it was a big yes. It's one of those things that I was out there feeding my cat. I, by, and I had gotten hit, I could lose an eye, I could get hit on the brain, I could be paralyzed, I can, I mean, you never know, you gotta be careful. As soon as you see in, hear anything like that, please call it in. This officer did a great job, very good job. I'm very impressed at, at how our, our department is tasked for the Lower Valley Health Health Board. And I just wanna say thank you very much for everything you have done for us. And they're still working at it because it's not working. So I just wanna say as you all, as part of our, the, the cast here, and also members of our, our police department here at the uh, Census Advisory Board, and if some of you are present, some of you from the community, please pass this on, especially to your community members, so that they can be aware, and also because they're moving from one place to another. And I hear them everywhere, I've even, you even get startled, even if you're in the store, because you hear them and just, oh my God, here's another one. But, you know, just be careful, because you never know. And our, our seniors and our, our, our little kids, uh, uh, school kids can be even involved in some of these uh, things that, that they, they raise also real like if they're raising they even one of the parents he would say start go she lets them I mean she's a black girl and and they raise right in the street so be careful and like I said call it in not emergency call it in but if it gets worse call 911 thank you so much Commander and thank you very much for all your good work as well. Thank you. Hello, thanks for coming. Uh, for those that don't know me, uh, Commander Ramos, I'm the regional commander here. Uh, like I said, I'm charging it out. Um, reason we, I started this up again is I think we needed that communication from the neighborhood to us. You're her. You're our eyes and ears out there. I don't know if you guys saw the town hall uh, I did last week. Thanks for your like. Thanks for your comment. Yeah, we did a put it out on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. We're gonna have we'll have another one next month for uh, Century, so we will. Uh, should I, I guess you're not on Facebook? Well, I, I have Facebook, but you know, yeah, I, I was yeah. our PR, PIO yeah. office <laughs> uh, who tried tried their best to get it out. I'll tell them to put it out even more if that's the case. Um, so the whole thing is just to communication. So, like I said, we're partners in this. So, I grew up in the valley. Just because it's, it's for anyone get, at that time. I when know. we used to do it, it was two years ago, every two or three. Every month, we try to bring in somebody to speak, mm -hmm. and it got a little hard mm -hmm. you know, to find some. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm looking at every other month, okay. and that way we can really get more. Uh, you guys can bring up more issues. Um, Although if we don't get a speaker, I'm always happy to be the speaker. <laughs> 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 He's shy, so. Yeah. <laughs> gotta get rid of my shyness. <laughs> yeah, just uh, to help you out, too. It said, we don't need guns here. And then those kids are getting out of hand, you know. Everybody, you know, you need the, you know, as much help, you know, eyes and ears to help right. you out there because I have a friend that's a state trooper, but he's a lieutenant, and, and then I told him, hey, Tell, tell your boss to get you off the border and bring you out, you know, in the streets, you know. We need you out in the street. You're, you're a safety patrol. You're not a border watcher, you know. Come out here and help us out. And a lot of things to do because they were saying yesterday in the news that, you know, 
you think it's gonna get bad with that war? You know, you think it's gonna get bad? It's, a, it's gonna get worse. And I don't see why just one country could pull this up and just, we could, you know, can't do nothing. We gotta work, you know, by ourselves, you know, recruit. The people don't wanna work, okay? They start, uh, you know, telling them that you gotta go work, you know, back in the days that, you know, you don't have any more unemployment, so work, work you know. And it's, you know, it's, it's our fault because we're getting lazy. And it's, it, it is gonna get worse, but if we just let one more get, we're a rich country. We could make it anywhere we want, you know. Raise everything, live by ourselves, and then whatever, you know. We can't let anybody, you know, bring us down. One of the things that we do, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but when we go to the schools and we address the schools, we explain to them the dangers of a gun. As far as we're concerned, if you all see a BB gun, it looks like a real gun. We don't know if it's a BB gun or not. So unfortunately, sometimes we can't take that chance of is, is it or isn't it, especially when it's pointed at us. And you see all these incidents that happen at the schools throughout the country. And these young adults that go in there, don't go in with BB guns, they go in with real guns. So we have to treat it as a real gun. So when we go to the schools and do our presentations, we stress and talk to all the students there to not bring their BB guns, a gun, a knife. We talk about vaping, bullying. There's a lot of issues that we cover and we have to get them at that elementary state at that level because they're still at that age where you can mold them, you can still explain things to them. They still have respect for the law. And that's why we're hoping to get back to that and focus in that to our, our elementary because we tell them there and they see the uniform, but we do stress the, the dangers of guns, BB guns, or any type of weapon, just so that you know that we're addressing that in our schools. Just keep in mind though that BB guns are still lawful, you can still buy them. I mean, I grew up as a kid with a BB gun. Obviously the parent, my parents had a lot of say so on how I used it. I wasn't shooting at windows or anything like that, but keep in mind, I mean, it's still lawful. One of the things is when I see a BB gun, at first I thought they're the old kind, the long ones, but they're no. not. Now they're, they're, they're small, like, like the they're, tennis. They're in the air. Yes, and I said, oh my gosh, I said, <laughs> it went over me and I didn't even know. I, I thought it was the long ones, but when I saw them shooting and I didn't have it on the scar, the sparks came out of it when he shoot me at the, at the BB gun and I didn't even have it recorded. I mean, it's like, oh my God, you know, and, and then when my neighbor saw it, he was sticking in it on the, on the, on the pants because he lived right next to her. And it was like, oh my God, and we live right next door. I mean, we never know, you can hit. And I worked in the emergency uh, long back before that, but uh, anything like that can even take out your eye or your breathing on your nose hits you anyway in your face. It's very dangerous, even in, in part of your body, you know. It's very hard and it's very dangerous for, for uh, and especially if you hit a child or anything, you never know. Uh, so please be careful and if you can, report it right away before it does get into you. Would you like to address us on issues? Uh, yes, uh, I want to let, uh, also make a statement to the fact that a lot of the issues that are being brought forward uh, to the community have to do with parenting skills. Uh, a lot of the parents are at fault for allowing uh, guns to be in the hands of, the, of their kids. And they say, well, it's not a gun. And you have to be taught. <coughs> a lot of the, our children now in schools, um, now they want to blame everything into, into mental, mental health issues. And although I agree that mental health is a problem, I also believe that disciplinary by the parents is not being done in the home. Uh, there's a lot of um, parents that, um, although we receive the discipline when we were young, it's not the same type of discipline the kids are doing nowadays. And uh, I don't have TikTok, but it seems like TikTok has gone wild about more. I, my daughter, 
she showed me all the stuff that the woman was touching. To me, Facebook is not a, an avenue of communication. To me, Facebook is a, a, a fun to you know, communicate with your family, your neighbors, blah, but not uh, a communication for law enforcement. My representative uh, for this district uh, never has never had a meeting. He said, well, I have Facebook. It's not a communication. To me, it's not. It is a fun thing. Instagram, Facebook, all of that. And so, but I do want to address the fact that uh, well, I like to work with kids. I love to work with the kids, but the, the parenting skills have to be there. There's a lot of great kids in our community, a lot of great kids. But by the wayside, we have the bad ones too. Everybody has them. So we just have to be, I said, tolerant, but be careful. And I'm glad you started up the program again. It's very important that the community speaks out to the needs of the community. Yeah, and I wanted to gauge the interest. Uh, it's worth bringing back. So um, that's, that's, an, that's another reason to be here. Mm -hmm. um, are there topics that you would like to see us bring presented on? Right now, what's going on is fraud with the uh, the elderly, especially the people that be on the phone now, because they're not using phones, they're using the cell phone, and that was one of them. And we need to know, because you think that you call, say for example, I thought I was calling Amazon, and that it came in, but by the way, they were asking you other information, that like your, your uh, debit card number, all that stuff. And people that are not aware, older people, they're being taken advantage. And right now, that's a problem that we're having a lot. We need so to like the scams? No, the scams? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the spam calls. Yeah, the spam calls. And you know, even though you called Amazon, I called Amazon, and they, you know, continued, but then they started getting more into the uh, detail. And then I realized that I was not talking to people from Amazon. So I don't know how that happened, but if there's a toll free number and then you assume it is, so I went ahead and called just to argue on, on something that they had charged me for that I didn't buy, but it wasn't Amazon, it was somebody else. So they got my information. Something on scams. Yeah, on scams. Right right right. I would also like to see uh, more education to the community and I'll bring some people over. Um, Safe community is one thing, but also clean community. Um, and we were talking about code enforcement, and uh, we like to see how the code officers in El Paso, what, what do we look out for? What is right, what is not right? Mm -hmm. To tell the citizens, you know, yeah, yeah, get those code enforcement officers to say, and, and, I'll, and I'll go into Spanish, no, eso no hace nada. <laughs> so, you know, the thing is, is that if, 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 if we're educated and people are educated, what number do you call? You know, it's not a 911 situation, but it's a 313 situation, and we have to educate the community that if there's something really bad in your community, and, and, and I, I have one house on Tarrant Street, but those, those issues have been addressed. The house is abandoned, but it's not abandoned. It, uh, the owner lives out of, out of state, and he, he just brings something to just kind of whip up the peace, but it's it's all sh shut up. And you, you can't really legally do anything to him as long as you kind of clean it up. But it's an eyesore to the community. Right. But uh, but we have to educate, uh, and, and I do a lot of those too, because people will knock on my door and say, can you get this, so I have to do it. But educating them on that. Yeah, we actually work very close with code enforcement. Do you? Yeah. yeah and I, and I they actually fall under our town. Really? Do they? Oh, that's, that's one yeah, of our Like I tell you, one of our meetings has something coming that's going to be with code enforcement because we address a lot of different concerns. And they're out there working. There's a lot of code yeah. enforcement. We're actually, I'm actually working on uh, EDD Company. There you go. Um, yeah, they do by our royal then. We're working, on, we're working on that with other entities in the city, ESP mm -hmm. and other things. Working on that. Yeah, that's wonderful. I'd like to see it. So, is code enforcement not going out there? Say, like, my neighbor, we were like over six feet tall. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to call the code enforcement on him. I told him, like, dude, just come down because he was a steal. Uh -huh. So, they're supposedly not code enforcement. They're going to go out there and let's do court reports. Right. 
Right. So I use a 311 cap. Yeah, three, one, three. No, the, the app on the yeah. phone. Oh. You can take a picture. Three, one, 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 three, one, one, three, one, three, one, 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 one, three, the speakation is very uh, yeah, no, they're like little staff and tools. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. You guys should get that involved. Yeah. I'm working with a coach that we want to bring back the Optimus, the T-ball, for the baseball. Yeah. There's a lot of kids you work with, okay? I don't know. A lot of you guys know it. Oh, I used to play there. You know? it's that, but we're trying to bring it back because it'll help the community and educate our kids. You know? Keep them going. Uh, the T ball, the coach beach, and the Adams, you know, right. get, get them going. And you know, Sylvia, it's right. I've been talking to the youth commanders in what now six years, someone I think, with 1161, what I told you by this. Mm -hmm. And it's, it looks like I live in Moon City. They have bricks, tires, a whole bunch of junk because the house is falling apart. And I talked to you, and I believe I talked to you. And uh, was this on Ranger? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I got code out there. Yeah, but they haven't done anything. It's been going for years, and they were kind of building in the back. I says, how can they build on the back? And they have got it's a uh, and we're residential uh, with uh, duplexes or uh, not apartments, but duplexes. And it's been now going on for six years, and they haven't done a thing. They have it there, it's a tree service. They come early in the morning and now if you see, now they got the truck and they moved him to the opposite side of Granger because Granger uh, goes all the way up by the freeway. It's okay. a little cul-de-sac. So now they took one of the, the trucks over there. So they move things around, but they haven't done anything to the house. I mean, clean up the, the house, it looks terrible. We try to maintain everybody, but it's been like that for about five, six years. And you can you see it, you can Google it on, on Earth and you can see it. Okay. And I think uh, they went there and whatever they were trying to uh, build in the back, they stopped by this bar and trying to do something to the house. They haven't done a thing. The only thing they did, they cleared up all the firewood that they had, the trees that they go and clean. They clear out the backyard just to, I guess they were going to build something and then the city came in and, and they stopped them from doing it because I guess they didn't get a, a permit. But I've been having problems, and that was that uh, tow truck. The guy moved out. We had one truck, and then before we had, we had three. So finally, that was taken care of. He moved because he was parking even in front of the house, and he would wait, and he would block the the street. And then the guy across the street was getting uh, upset, so they were, you know, arguing between the two of them. And I said, let me see if I can do something. Has so it gotten better? Uh, because I, I yeah, did sign, out, yeah, I did sign him, yeah. yeah. I signed a couple of his trucks for being there. Yeah, so. and he moved out. Uh, I went on, uh, on vacation when I came back at the time because I saw uh, the owner and he was cleaning. He, he even cleaned the, the yard and he was very upset because I told you, remember, I knew it was him, the oil, because they drained the, the, the oil and then they went on, yes, crest, uh, on uh, Valley Crest and, and and they spilled it, but you know, you gotta have a picture, and I didn't have a picture, and they went and dumped all the oil there. Okay, let me, I'll, I'll receive, I'll resubmit it again mm -hmm. to them. Well, that's 1161, it it's the only problem that we've been having for six years, nothing has been done. Okay. But the guy with the tow trucks, he moved out. Well, good, that's one, yeah, one yeah, issue. Yeah, he had one, and now he had three. Okay, Ms. Rhodes, if I, I may chime in. Uh, that might not be something for code to work on, but we no, can refer over exactly. to maybe zoning. 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 And I even called the uh, 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 environmental services because, you know, I've been a, I was a church person here, so I know who to call. With one of the but they, they haven't done anything at all. I, said, yeah. I can't believe six, six, six years and still the brakes, the blue tarp on top of it. And here we, we try to keep and maintain the, yeah. my neighbor across the street that cleaned her, her yard. Everybody cleaned. But that's the only house with the same thing, the blue tarp, uh, woods, and bricks on top of the house. Yeah, the commander mentioned code is now falls under the police department. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have these meetings to try and find out to try and find out what each 
uh, right. the department is in charge of, and we're, as a matter of fact, we're gonna have somebody from planning join us for one of these meetings so we exactly. can say, this yeah, is them, we this is us, yeah, so we can all that. attack it as a team. Yeah, we so need we'll to do all that, those yeah. Situations, so. yeah. yeah. But I'll get a hold of zoning again oh, and yeah. forward it to them. Yeah. So and then on Fridays, and she likes that, she was saying that, you know, that there are big uses, they have a, the bar way down on Penn Mill. There's a lot of speeding, and even my son came from out of town. Did you hear that? The shooting going on. I said, I can't hear anything because I'm in the back. And apparently that's what's going on, but I can hear the cars, either they're speeding in, in the church, you know, racing, they do their quillies in the back. Right. And yeah, one time I was coming late, you know, I went to a concert, and they almost people me because they, they do race. But it's on Fridays, mostly Fridays and, and Saturdays. I don't know, it's because of the bar going and coming, but it's it's getting dangerous right there on Valley Crest and Cashman. But it's Friday around after 10, so they, you know, it's party time, and that's right. when you do it. But yeah, otherwise- so If you have traffic complaints, does anyone have traffic complaints? I, I do, I love the Alameda and Nervo on Lowen, and we didn't. Okay. The thing is, is that the car lots, um, the car lots on the other side are parked their cars in the front, and when we come down the yard road, we have to face traffic to turn because it's one of those where it's cheap as soon as you get out of the that you turn really into that thing. So when they park like that, if somebody's coming this way and just trying to get out, you don't say. And it's always the gentleman from the other side of the lot. And they've gotten to a point that we almost get to a third, fourth house mm -hmm. and parking and doing their like leaving junk cars. At the dead end, I call because people sometimes leave cars and just take off. So I call and I notify the agency or this and that. But our neighbors really take me in and honestly, it shouldn't be happening all the time because the car keeps getting in and out of that street by itself. Mm -hmm. And then when two cars inside, it's even more difficult. Alameda and Bowen. And the car transfers. Um, mostly every day, yeah. Every day. Yeah. And the car transfers, since I have a neighbor who rents out a house, it's always vacant. The last 15 years, he used to rent his cars. Mm -hmm. So people, they live in car transfers and they go to the big turn. And our street isn't, the way they designed it, the town is very small. And the farmland. Yeah. You're in the back of a forest. And yeah, so it's kind of like a tight mm -hmm. turn, but they already took out the gas meter, they took it out. And it's empty again. And behind me have empty house because it's behind Ben's discount. And that the five acre spread, and he never cleans, he never, it's vacant, people up and down the canal. Where I live is like basically Franklin's here and then the community ditches here. And there's no, um, like there's no fencing. So the kids from the, from the apartments, they do the canal. So I'm afraid one day when we're irrigating, somebody's gonna drown because mm -hmm. these kids go and they run and they go into the canal to swim and they come back. I'm going to splash in the mud. There's no fencing. There's no fencing. Splash in the mud. Good thing we're not far into it yet. 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 Now we see Carolina and Josh on that curve. Mm -hmm. I see like five cars go up into the ditch. I tried to get the uh, guardrails installed, but then they told me it was storm water was in charge of it, and then I just tried to get in the right now. What's in one hundred? No, this is not, uh, about nine ten o'clock at night. They started to come back in. That's that stop sign on Stiles and Dodge and um, Dodge and Dale. A lot of the cars go in there. They just they want them to slow down the train. And I've seen it, like I'm coming from Dodge, it's going south on Stiles. Mm -hmm. I'll see cars just fly by that. That little street, right? Josh? Yeah. I have a friend that lives on the corner and someone was always going up this way. Oh, oh. <laughs> it looks like his father already knew what to do. Yeah. yeah. Really had good they, they hit my fence about eight times. Yeah. Three of the times they just stay. On the weekends, from McRae to Litrovino, that's straight away. Either it's a motorcycle or uh, racing cars or you know, little cars. Yeah. Go right there about seven o'clock and then, what's, where's the police at, you know? You start hearing it and all the way to the morning, early morning, you know, they're drag racing down the, the, the straightaway. And all it takes is just one little exit and it's going to 
They're going to start crying and say, no, my son's not like that, no. And it's very simple. stop because stone garden issues a grant where we assist border patrol and they they uh, station us midway once they've got all that so they a lot of people that are commuting back and forth they're thinking we're running radar and that's when all the traffic slows down all that everybody's paying attention at least to the speed limit so with those grants coming back and us helping and working stone garden and being it's during the day and in the evening up to, until midnight at least that'll address that issue and that'll help and that's something that from what the supervisor said from stone garden it's going to be like a monday through sunday program for the next several several months the grant hopefully will be finalized on the 10th of april so that we can start doing that and because there hasn't been at least out there part of that people notice that and that's that's a concern but hopefully that'll that'll get addressed with the stone garden Rest assured. Uh, the other one is at Mesa Roma in Alameda. A lot of times, because kids, and some of these kids are, I get kids because they're 14 and 16 and they're driving and they go room, room, and they're on top of the bridge and they, so that people can push, go for, you know, just <clears throat> get out and let them go through. Or I don't know, they just, or they're showing off their cars or anything like that. But then one of the times I saw one of them, and I was about a car behind me, but I could I wanted to see, but I couldn't because it's only in one lane. Mm -hmm. And when he turned on on uh, on, on Alameda, I thought he was going to hit the people that were going to go up to the bridge because his car just went like this. And I just said, Oh my God. We're just but, hopeful that the majority of the public or the majority of the drivers don't feed into the road rage incidents and they just ignore it. And we can just hope for that because that happens citywide, citywide in the county. Unfortunately, you know, when we hear road rage incidents or somebody shooting at another car, it involves that. But the majority of the time, people know just to ignore it. And we're just hopeful for that, that people can just be responsible and mature enough to just ignore it. Um, in regards to many complaints and people don't mean traffic, you can also call the front desk and they'll put out a little email to all of us with an order to headquarters traffic and we can all stay clean on it. Lupus. 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 What do you all think about the new medium they put us on? 
It's safer. To me, it makes a difference because I live right here across the street. Looks like you're going to be putting up a light. No, I get in go and knock them down every every day. They're very, they're very <laughs> strong. They're very difference. strong and sturdy. It's yeah. not just a rinky dinky. <laughs> I thought it was they're good. put with big cement. Like them? Well, they're cement barriers, so it'll. Are there lights on the arbor? Are you guys uh, maintenance on the arbor? Because mm -hmm. it gets you really, really dark. So how are you going to make sure? Yeah. Yeah. You need more lights. Yeah, I thought they were going to do landscaping, but no, they're they're doing that even on Copia, but they're doing it because of accidents, uh, head-ons, and that's why. Now they're doing that on Richard now. Yeah, I mean, so, but I thought at least they're going to have nice uh, landscaping, I hope. <laughs> Well, again, thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you. We'll see you all in two months. If you want to take a donut for the road, take one home after you. After you have dinner, have a donut, there's some coffee. You can take a cup of coffee home, please. Uh, thank you, thank you for coming. Thank you for coming, sir. Thank you for coming.